Information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. The devil is in the details, and it involves the fees on your money. Stay tuned. Welcome to the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money, The Worry-Free Retirement, with your host, the author of four books on retirement and offices in Bowling Green and Louisville, Kentucky, the money missionary himself, Tony Walker. Have you seen the recent advertisement on TV that has the little girl at the lemonade stand and a guy walks up to buy some lemonade thinking it's whatever it was, a buck or whatever, and then all of a sudden she tacks on all of these additional fees in addition to the original price, which of course the consumer thought, what in the world is going on? Well, you might feel like that guy at the lemonade stand, feeling like you've got a price that's been set up by your financial advisor or think there's the price, But then you discover later on that maybe those fees that are tacked on are not so transparent after all. And that's the subject of our show as we deal with the devil in the details and your fees on your money. I'm Tony Walker. Good to have you with us today. Hope you're having a good day. And uh, with us at the helm producing the show is none other than uh, America's favorite financial sidekick, Mr. Aaron Orender. we got a good show for you today. Very valuable show because there's so much going on with this recent ruling by the Department of Labor. Now, I know most of you would say, I could care less about this, but this is a huge issue in our world, and it might help explain why all of a sudden, out of the blue, maybe your advisor is changing how they operate. Maybe they've been adding additional compensation products. Maybe they've been charging different fees. Heck, we kind of had to react to this. You know, for years, of course, we do a lot of fixed annuities, but for years, we were putting people with Vanguard at no cost. And over time, we grew more and more accounts. In fact, here's a, uh, let's show a a picture of this, Aaron. Uh, This was several months ago, but we decided to move over to Charles Schwab as our custodian because that platform was the investment platform I used in the 90s. And Schwab just did a much better job working with an independent advisor. So as we grew and grew and grew, Vanguard, the way they were set up to deal with us, really did not provide the services we needed. But in turn, we are providing additional services, so we had to charge a small fee a minimal fee, which we'll talk about, but nevertheless a fee. And of course, people say, well, why are you doing this, Tony? Well, a lot of it was to help get additional compensation, not only to help with our clients, but to help us because of all these regulations and changes. So mark it down, folks. You can mark this down. Whenever the government gets involved in something, it's going to cost consumers money. It will not save you any money. In fact, we've got a statistic here. Let's put this up on the little TV screen beside me, Aaron. This is really interesting. We covered this on some ads we ran on TV recently. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce, look at this, are estimating, I bet it's higher than this, but they are estimating because of this recent Department of Labor ruling, 7 million smaller investors. We're talking about the people under $250,000, a lot of the people we work with, quite frankly, will not have access to personal advice. So you think about this, the government came in with this fiduciary rule, which on the surface is a great idea. I'm a fiduciary. Everybody should have to disclose their commissions and fees, nothing wrong with that. But it's changed the whole complexion. They took it about three steps too far. And now what's happening is the big boys, the big Wall Street firms, they're not hurt by it. They're just changing up their products. And what's happening is who's hurt by it are those smaller investors, those savers out there, that the big boys are not going to help. But guess what? Tony Walker, Financial to the Rescue. In fact, with our new Charles Schwab platform, rather than going the opposite way, people are wanting more and more money from you before they'll even talk to you. We've gone the opposite way. We don't even have a minimum account size. So if you called us up and you need our help, and if you're a saver and you got $5,000, we will be there to assist you. As I always like to say, our mission is to serve the underserved, not to continue to stick it to the little guy, which is what seems to be happening more and more as we watch things play out. Oh, speaking of fees, I couldn't help resist this. We'll we'll do a cut shot of this, but I had to yank it off the wall. Aaron's like, where are you going with that, Tony? (laughs) I've got in my Louisville office where we're recording this, 
This is an old, I framed it, this is an old article that came out, I can't believe how time has passed by, Courier Journal, 1999, it was actually an interview they did with a lady in Scottsville, Kentucky, a Miss McReynolds, and they quoted me throughout the article, and it's funny, even in 1999, we're going to be talking about how you can cut cost. I'll read the quote they highlighted here, it says, from Tony Walker, this sounds odd, Tony Walker saying this, which is of me, of course. Does that sound weird, Aaron? I, I don't know, but they, okay, I'm reading it, there it is, it says, they should really understand the cost of investments up front. And what I was referring to is in this case, widows, or anybody for that matter, but widows, when they lost a husband, many of them will inherit the accounts that their husband had. I just met a widow today. This happens pretty frequently. Uh, let's say stereotypically, the husband handles all the finances, all the investments, has a great relationship with their broker, that's fine. And then maybe the spouse has never really been in the loop, okay? Then all of a sudden, hubby dies. This account rolls over to an advisor that maybe the spouse, the surviving spouse, has never even really met or maybe not even like or care for because they've got different investment philosophies. So now all of a sudden, they're thrust into this role of having to listen to this advisor. So a lady came into me today and she said, this is what happened to me. The original advisor my husband used passed the torch on down to a younger advisor, said, she, you know, this person's a real nice uh, agent, advisor, but really, I don't have a game plan. So she had watched the show, and that's why she's talking to us. So hopefully we can be of help to her. And right now, you might be sitting there saying, Tony, I don't know what my fees are. You keep talking about all these fees. Put this email up if you would, uh, Aaron. This is uh, Heather in our office. Heather does a great job of analyzing fees, and for no cost, this is a free service, we will do a free fee analysis of your 401k, your brokerage statements, uh, your investment account statements, whatever you've got, annuities, if you've got variable annuities, we'll do it. We'll be happy to do this free of charge. And again, and in many cases, we're talking about not saving you just hundreds of dollars a year. We're talking about thousands of dollars per year. It's been a busy week, as Aaron would tell you here. We've been very busy in between shows. I'm seeing people all day long. Just took a phone call from somebody. Again, he knew that we're, we've started this new program. We're really offering a very competitive fee platform. He said, Tony, I've watched your ads. I've seen you on TV. It's ironic. I got something out of the mail, out of the blue, from a broker I've used for years. The broker wanted me to sign some paperwork to acknowledge and accept the new fee schedule. I don't know where he's coming from because I haven't seen this fee schedule. He just told me this just happened. Listen to this. The minimum fee up to one half million dollars is two and a half percent. So that means if you give this broker $500,000, the broker, Wall Street, whoever's behind all this, is going to charge $12,500 per year, whether you make a penny or not. Now think about that. Think how hard it is to even make $12,500 a year, uh, especially what if the account goes down, they still get their fee. So I told this gentleman, because our fee is a flat fee, I said, we could do the same thing for 3,000 bucks. $3,000 versus over $12,000, that's a lot of mulo. So again, if you're sitting there thinking, man, I don't even know what my fees are, Tony, <clears throat> don't put it off. Uh, there's no obligation. Why don't you go on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com right now. Just click on the Contact Tony button, or you can email Heather. That's Heather at TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Heather at TonyWalkerFinancial.com and just request a free fee analysis. Now, as a fiduciary, you're going to have to take your financial clothes off a little bit here. I'm not the amazing Kreskin. You're going to have to give us copies of the statements of the accounts you want us to analyze for you. So again, it's absolutely free. I think for the most part, most people are surprised and sometimes even shocked to find out what they are paying in these fees. So that's TonyWalkerFinancial.com. When I return, we're going to dive into this Department of Labor issue, and we're going to talk about the different fees, and we're going to talk about the reaction of the financial world to this. The reason this is so important for you, for the consumer, because num number one, it's going to teach you a lesson about every time there's more regulation, more of this gets pushed down to the consumer. But more importantly, I'm afraid you're going to have all these whimsical things happen out of the blue from brokers and agents, and you're not going to understand why. And my bet is, for the most part, it's going to tie right back to this recent ruling that took effect from the Department of Labor. I'm Tony Walker. You're watching The Worry-Free Retirement. I'll be right back. You stay tuned.
Are you worried about going broke in retirement and being a burden to your children? Plan on attending Tony Walker's next free workshop, Retirement 101, Tuesday, August 15th in Bowling Green and Monday, August 21st in Louisville. During Tony's workshop, you'll learn how to lower taxes and fees on your money and how to secure mailbox money for life. That's Retirement 101 with Tony Walker, Tuesday, August 15th in Bowling Green and Monday, August 21st in Louisville. Seating is limited, so register today at TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Welcome to Your Money Minute with the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker. Tony, you made an interesting comment to me before we got on the air about the financial world making money on other people's money, whether they are or not. What do you mean by that? Well, what I've noticed over the years, Angie, is the financial world, first of all, has to have our money to make money. So all of the marketing strategies, all of the one-liners, all of those things that they tell us, hang in there, uh, you can't pull out this much money, all those things really, when you think about it, benefit them. The difference between the financial world and the worry-free retirement process, we are constantly trying to think of the client. How can we help that client use, enjoy, and protect their hard-earned money? That's what we do best. Thanks, Tony. To schedule your personal appointment with Tony Walker, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. This has been your Money Minute with Tony Walker. Welcome back to the Worry Free Retirement, where we're going to dive in and understand who is really behind this Department of Labor ruling. Is it good, bad, and different? What are the high points? What are the low points? Well, let me take you back in history a little bit. And you got to remember, I've done this for 33 years, and I've been working in IRA, qualified plans, 401k rollovers for many, many years. So I've seen this trend play out. So if you'll go back around 9-11, that's when I used to manage a lot of money. When they flew into those buildings, I always tell people, that's when I decided to manage less money. And what I found was I was out of control, and so were my clients. So I began to look for savers. Uh, in fact, on this, uh, this particular book I wrote called The Three Personalities of Money, I need to mention this book more, the whole idea was to help people understand that there is a financial personality or predominant personality that we all have. We're either a saver, investor, or speculator. And my old degree in psychology, I guess, from Western crept up, and that's, that's where I came up with this, but I kept seeing this over and over. People were investing in things they didn't understand, and then when they lost money, they were upset not because they weren't investors, but because they were actually savers, and savers don't like to take a lot of risk. All right, so let's kind of go back in time, 10, 15 years ago. So we were one of the few people in the country that were doing so many of these rollovers, and we were moving a lot of this money into what we call fixed indexed annuities, because it was much safer than a lot of the money in Wall Street. So we noticed this trend, and this was about 10 years ago. At first, you would call the big boys, these big, huge brokerage companies that run these 401ks. Incidentally, there's, keep in mind, you gotta always follow the money. There's trillions of dollars. In fact, this article that came out in 401k Specialist Magazine, um, they're estimating that the retiring baby boomers potentially, listen to this, the amount of money that could roll over between now and 2020, listen to this, Aaron, could top over 11 trillion, that's with a T, 11 trillion dollars. So as you can imagine, if you're a 401k uh, big boy, I won't name these names, you know them all, the, the, the Fidelities, the Vanguards, the Mass there's a ton of them. Um, a bunch of empowers one of them. They have all this money and they're making fees on the money. So all of a sudden they see this trend because we would call them when we would do these rollovers and we noticed they were starting to question more and more of our clients. Why are you moving the money out? Where are you moving the money out? Which is fine, they can ask that. But these questions got more and more pointed. And I think what they realized is, hey, all these people are starting to retire, these baby boomers, and they actually are thinking about taking their money from us. They're rolling it over into individual IRAs. So you see this trend go on and on and on. And then we would call some of these companies, and not all of them, but some of their representatives would be very antagonistic. They would question our clients. Why are you moving the money out? It wasn't a nice frame of mind. And we would have to say, hey, look, this is their money. you got to roll it out. You know, cut the check, please. Let's move on. Well, isn't it interesting? The last couple of years, as this Department of Labor ruling started out, it was mainly to make sure everybody disclosed their fees and compensation. Again, a great idea. I'm 100% behind it. We've done it for years. It's called the fiduciary rule. Well, the more and more they got into it, we found out that a lot of them a lot of the ruling was actually making it more and more difficult, this is what I saw, 
to transfer money and roll it over from a 401k. And sure enough, now that the stuff has kind of hit the fan, look at what this says here. This article says the DOL's fiduciary rule, this is what just took effect, if and when it passes, it's already, it's already passed, but now it could be repealed under the a new administration, but well, let's assume it's still in place. The facts are the facts. It says will lead to fewer rollovers from 401k plans. Now, isn't that interesting? What was supposed to help the consumers by giving them more choices actually is going to make it more difficult for advisors to go in there and get the consumer's money out if the consumer wants to move it. It goes on down to say, while the 7.3 trillion IRA market is the largest, fastest growing segment of the U.S. retirement market, this group, Cerulli, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, noted that the regulation will impose greater scrutiny and complexity on the rollover market and potentially, listen to this, disrupt future flows. So now folks, if you don't think this is all about the money, think again. Now again, let me emphasize, in theory, I love the fiduciary rule. I think the Department of Labor was on the right track originally. Somewhere we've gotten off track though, and this is why so many smaller investors, in my view and in the view of a lot of people, are going to be underserved. Uh, here's another article, and I hate to belabor the point. This one is in Financial Advisor Magazine from Financial Times Service. Advisors weigh in on personal meaning of fiduciary. This is what's also funny. Because this law, it's not even really law, is, is what has been passed into this ruling by the Department of Labor. Incidentally, this only affects what we call qualified accounts, IRAs, 401ks, thrift savings accounts. Uh, it's only those accounts that are moving to other investments that all this disclosure has to be provided. Um, let me digress here, Aaron. This is kind of interesting. Okay. This binder. All right. Now, again, we've been audited a bunch by the state. We're okay with that as fiduciaries. This policies and procedure manual. This is new stuff we have to come up with. I had to send Heather to Florida to learn. Folks, all these regulations create time and costs. So just be aware. We're, we're going to keep up with it. We'll talk about this in the last segment of what the Bible has to say about money. I'm going to be obedient. I'm not going to buck the system here. But let me just say this is a real hassle and it does affect our ability to give advice because we're spending so much time on this darn stuff. But anyway, this is what's so funny about it. So a regulation's been passed. Nobody knows what the heck's going on. Everybody's getting opinions from everybody else and we're spending money on legal fees trying to figure this out. But they go to these advisors and these advisors are trying to determine what a fiduciary even is. Here's one gentleman, Mark Rylance of Newport Beach, California. He says, fiduciary to me means giving financial advice in the same capacity you would to your family members. Now, I don't know about that. I've got some family members I wouldn't mind intentionally giving bad advice to just for the fun of it. So I don't know if that's a good definition. Uh, John Power, he's in Miss Massachusetts somewhere. If I can't make a good case for rolling over a 401k to my management, I won't recommend it. To me, it's fairly simple. Fiduciary rules should also be that simple. Well, the fiduciary rules aren't that simple. I agree with them. This ought to be simple stuff. Here's a good one that came out in Financial Advisor magazine. Edward Jones backtracks on DLR rule and commission ban. So apparently Edward Jones was going to ban its agents charging commission. Now, I'm not going to quote this whole article. Apparently they are going to let them start selling commission products. Again, my point, folks, is if you're hearing stuff from your advisors and they seem wishy-washy or there's changes going on, probably rightfully so because the regulations have caused so much confusion in terms of what is going on right now. So what I'm going to do, we usually don't do this. I'm going to get the whiteboard out real quick and then we'll go into the Bible segment. We've got a few minutes for this because I want to show you something on the whiteboard really quickly on fees. And I'm going to do a calculation that's going to be very interesting, a future value of the fee savings I can save you if you fall into the camp of this gentleman I just spoke with on the phone. You're watching The Worry for Retirement. Stay tuned. I'll be right back with the whiteboard. Welcome to Your Money Minute with the author and creator of The Worry-Free Retirement, Tony Walker. Tony, everybody's telling me I need to save, save, save for my retirement. But when, there comes a point when I want to enjoy something and you're telling me I can do both? I can save and enjoy? Well, the financial world wants you to believe, Angie, that with inflation and all these nursing home costs and all these fears that they build into retirement, that you've got to save boatloads of money. 
Now what I found in doing this for over 30 years, the average person when they get into what I call the second half of life actually starts spending less money. So what I encourage my clients to do when you get to the age of 55, 65, that's the point in time where you can really enjoy your money. Problem is, you need a game plan. That's what the Worry Free Retirement's all about and that's what we can do for our clients. Give them a game plan that's safe and secure and that they can use and enjoy their money. Thanks, Tony. To schedule your personal appointment with Tony, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. For years, you've seen him on TV. Now see him in person. As retirement specialist and fiduciary, Tony Walker personally hosts his next free workshop, Retirement 101, Tuesday, August 15th in Bowling Green and Monday, August 21st in Louisville. Learn how to set up mailbox money and leave your worries behind. Attend Tony's workshop Tuesday, August 15th in Bowling Green and Monday, August 21st in Louisville. Mailbox money can help you enjoy and protect your retirement. Seating is limited, so register now at TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Welcome back to the Worry-Free Retirement. I got to save some time for what the Bible has to say about these devil in the details. But first, real quick, here's a good example. All right, let's go over that one gentleman situation. Half million dollar account, managed account. Their fees, in other words, his current advisor, $12,500 per year, every year. If he moves that over to our new Charles Schwab platform with me as the manager, $3,000 a year. That's a savings, folks of $9,500 a year, per year. Now, you can't stop there though. When you're using cost, when we recapture cost, remember I talked about it the first, this is all about recapturing cost. That's called an LOC or lost opportunity cost. So assuming we could have made 4% on our money instead of just giving it over to Wall Street, that $9,500 a year at 4%, listen to this folks. Well, let me put it this way. What if I could create an extra half million dollars of net worth for you over the next 30 years? Probably be something you'd want to do, right? With no risk? Okay. Using the same variables, assuming you had these fee savings with 4% in 30 years, the actual amount, I had Heather calculate this, is right at $554,000. So that's how much these additional fees at 4% interest over a 30-year period of time cost you. And again, folks, these are huge numbers. It's not like that's thirty or $40,000. This is a half million dollars of fees with no guarantees whatsoever. Well, fo hopefully, folks, you will realize that we can help you analyze these fees. Again, email Heather at heather at TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Heather at TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Tell her you want to do the free fee analysis. Let's get started on that right away. So what does the Bible have to say about these devil in the details? Because there's a bunch of them here. Well, you know, sometimes we have to admit in the financial world, we financial advisors are pretty good salesmen. We have to convince people that what we're doing is in their best interest. But with any time there's a transaction, there's a sales transaction of anything. And I define sales as anything that takes place where money has changed hands or services have changed hands. Sometimes people bring up attorneys. They say, well, they're not salesmen, are they? Well, sure they are. In exchange for money, they might do a trust document or a will. CPA is a good salesman. In exchange for doing your tax returns, you pay them money. What do I sell? I sell sleep insurance. <laughs> what we're trying to do is make sure you can go to bed at night and have some money that you know is guaranteed and protected. But unless you think I'm a pretty good salesman, we got to go back in time to the Bible and try to understand who the first salesman on earth really was. That's right. We're talking about the devil. So if you go back into Genesis 3, 4, hang in there with me. Aaron's going, what in the world are you talking about, Tony? If you go back to 3, 4, look at what it says here. God allowed Adam and Eve to enjoy the fruit of any tree in the garden except one tree. God forbid them to eat from that. And what was it? This is what we talked about last week. We all want to know, right? We want to know the difference between good and evil. God said, stay away from that tree. But isn't it interesting? We talked about this last week again, these main categories of subject matter that dog us, that we want to be more knowledgeable, gain more wisdom. And a lot of times, unfortunately, it takes our focus off God. So he warned us of these things. We warned of these things last year. Watchman Nee in his book talked about this, but here's Adam and Eve. They got everything they would ever want. God told them to stay away from one tree, but in pops the world's greatest salesman, this serpent known as the devil. In 3.1, what does he say? Look at this. He starts his sales pitch with a good question. All salesmen start with questions, which Eve acknowledges that she shall not eat from the tree and die again. That's what he says. Surely not. 
You're not going to die, are you? See how convincing the snake is? See how convincing sometimes advisors are? Oh, surely you don't believe that. Or, no, nah, it'll make better interest than that. Don't worry about it. Hang in there. And in the meantime, you're sitting there shaking in your boots. So, for instance, in this example, if a snake can take Adam and Eve out of a very content, very subdued situation and keep them from following one, only one command, that's all they had to follow, and they do something they're not supposed to do, surely we can fall victim to these same things. We have to be very careful, folks. And in finance, all I'm trying to say is it's very tempting to always hear what you want to hear. It's always tempting for even advisors sometimes to tell you all the good things, and they kind of leave out the bad things. So with that said, let me make sure you understand something about money. I've done this for 33 years. I've written and worked with about every financial product imaginable, and here's what I've learned. This is the real wisdom I've discovered. There is no perfect investment, and there is actually no terrible investment. It's only the investment that's right for you and your situation, and hopefully you're very, very comfortable with what you're doing, and if you're working with an advisor, you're comfortable that they truly have your best interest in place. We close with this back to John, 1 John 2.16. It's an interesting verse. It says that for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's the desire that we want to know and be like God and all the things we want while we're here, and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of the heart is not from the Father, but from the world. So friends, again, if you feel like maybe the financial world seems to be making out better than you do sometimes, if you're tired of all the sales pitches, if it just seems like you just want to sit down with somebody, relax, and listen, and try to help have them help you understand what it is you've got and where you're going, we would love that opportunity. As a fiduciary, I've done this a long time. I would like the opportunity to talk to you to see if we can help you be worry-free. It's easy to do. All you got to do is log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. All kinds of stuff there. We've got some workshops coming up in the Bowling Green, Northern Kentucky area, and Louisville area, so check out the workshops. We've got the annuity decision guides you can order. You can also email me if you would like to just have a general question. And of course, if you want to take advantage of the free fee analysis, uh, please do so by emailing heather at tonywalkerfinancial.com. Not handy at the internet, but want to give us a call, leave us a message, or talk to us, call us at 877 877- 499 walk. That's 877 499 walk. Well, until next week, you've been watching the Worry Free Retirement. I'm Tony Walker. You make it a good day, and you remember if all else fails, you be worry free. Thank you for watching the Worry Free Retirement with Tony Walker. If you need a safe and simple game plan for your retirement, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and schedule a free, no obligation meeting with Tony.